Oh my God. I'm excited because this is the first time we've ever given away this program. We're going to give away MAPS PED, <laughs> Performance Enhancing Design. This is the most advanced MAPS program ever. It's a double split bodybuilding workout program, not for the faint of heart. All right, so here's how you can win MAPS PED. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode to help us with the YouTube algorithm. Make it a good comment. Have some conversations with people. Get in there. Mix it up a little bit. If we pick your comment, you win free access to MAPS PED. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. You got to do those things. One more thing. We're having a sale right now. MAPS Prime, MAPS Prime Pro, and the Prime Bundle are all 50% off. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com to sign up. Just for, don't forget to use the code June Prime with no space for the discount. All right, enjoy this podcast. Yeah, you know, I know we we've we've messed around about talking about maybe doing this without headphones, so it's better visually. Yeah. But I'm going to be honest with you. I you know, know. I, I love it. So you know the scene in the Matrix when when Neo's about to learn like kung fu and every other martial art, and they they stick that thing in his back of his head. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, when I put these headphones on, bro, whoosh, yeah. I'm on. Speaking of that, I'm in the Matrix. Mark Wahlberg just came out with a new one that is kind of like totally biting off the Matrix. So you guys might like it. I, I it lost me because I, I was like, yeah, it's not original. Really? Yeah, it's called um, Infinity. I think something like that. You guys haven't seen it. Let uh, me guess. He's a cop from Boston. He's kind of a dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every movie he does. Oh, yeah. the wires all him, him and Matt Damon. Yeah, you know, they team up. Yeah, I want to watch that movie from Boston. What's that movie God. that uh, we're we're waiting for it to come out? Is Tom Cruise in it? It's like the future. No, it's that dude that you like. What's his name? Come on, that actor from uh, the dude that Justin likes. You know, what I'm talking about. Is that I one mean, actor that Justin's always like? If I if an actor ever played me in a movie, it oh be. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know you're talking about. Um, yeah, why Chris Hemsworth. Cr Chris, no, uh, no, but it is a Chris. No, no, no. It's a uh, Helmsworth. What happened to all of us? Did all of our Dang. brains fall out of our yeah, faces earlier? <laughs> this is so weird. Um, He's from Guardians of the Galaxy. Thank you. Yeah. It, oh, Pratt. Uh, Pratt. Thank you, Chris Pratt. That it's the movie where it's going to be coming out like next week or the week after, where people from the future go back in time to get more humans to fight the aliens. Yeah. It the looks future, future good. war or something like that. It looks really good. I know. I'm actually into that. I, I saw the trailer for that. And I'm was, pumped, dude, to yeah. watch that. And yeah. he's in it, so I like him too. He's I, a good know, I like seen him. The preview for that. You haven't seen that? I don't. I don't know if I have. What's it that called? Doug, Doug's about to pull it. I think it's called Future, oh, called future War. No, no, this is the one that. That's the Wahlberg one. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. Infinite. Where can you watch that, by the way? Uh, at my Apple. Oh, no, Paramount is the streaming, but through Apple you could you could buy it. So I bought it through Apple. Oh, I want to watch it. Uh, what the, when I was talking about, I don't Tomorrow remember. War. Tomorrow War. That looks really uh, good, dude. Tomorrow War. Tomorrow. Oh, so off with the Future Tomorrow War. war. Yeah. Dude, uh, I got to share this with you guys because it's, uh, it's this, you guys know it's been a struggle with the, the baby sleeping and yeah. all that. And I don't share just how much of a struggle it is. But um, and the reason why I'm bringing this up, by the way, is you know Father's Day just passed. And I got so many DMs from dads saying how much they appreciate us talking about being dads. Mm. I don't know. Do you guys get a lot of DMs like that? I do. Yeah, I got a few. They're pretty cool. Yeah, and I feel it's uh, really cool to hear that. And I guess there's not a lot of resources for dads to hear other guys who are, you know, dads who take it seriously or whatever. So I'm like, I, I should share this because when you first have a baby, it can be really challenging with sleep. And then when, you have, when you're sleep deprived, which Jessica is bearing the brunt of that, right? Oh my God, yeah. Sleep deprivation is it's a tool in, that they use in interrogation because yeah. it just it literally will break down all your oh, will. Oh, it's a form of torture. It's terrible, right? So we've been it's been very challenging and you know, Adam always says this quote on the podcast. He said it 100,000 times. It's one of the best quotes I've ever heard and you say one of your biggest strengths is also your greatest weaknesses, yeah. right? This is a great example of that because Yoda also said that <laughs> differently. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Strength is biggest with I don't strength know. is big. Yeah. I'm not even going to do it. Um, so Jessica's great. One of the things that makes her so special is, and why she when I first started dating her, why she was such an incredible stepmom, is that she's extremely empathetic and very very sensitive. So she's just so maternal, but that also makes it so challenging when she hears her baby cry. Right. Right. She can't handle it. So if he cries, it's like so hard for her because she feels it in her bones, right? So she has to go to him right away. And so it's been very, very difficult because he's now at the age where 
he has to cry a little bit to kind of figure out how to mm. soothe himself. Mm -hmm. So we we finally hit this kind of breaking point, and I I said to her, I said, please let me just take over, and what I need you to do is leave the house <laughs> because <laughs> what ends up happening if she hears him crying, right, right, she comes upstairs after ten minutes and has to like do something. Well, right. you know what makes that harder too is that. There, and of course, you know that both of you know this because you have kids already. But I remember when before Max was born, when you start like researching like strategies on like sleeping and raising your kid and feeding all these, like there is literally like a million different philosophies. You're right. And so, 100%. you know, like maybe you are like, oh, he needs to cry. Yeah. But then I bet she can probably defend it with some article that she read that said, oh, no. Yes. Yeah. And, and I, I agree. Yeah, so she, all kinds of books that yeah. have it. No, we have it nailed down and you have to do this method. You're right. So I don't, I'm, we both don't subscribe to the leave your kid and let them cry until they figure it out thing because it, it definitely, I can understand this it would feel like they're being abandoned like they're just sitting there crying by themselves and eventually they just fall asleep out of exhaustion i'm not i don't do that but what i do and i remember this when my son when my oldest was 15 now, i remember when he was a baby he would have challenges sometimes sleeping and what i would do is i would go in there i'd, I'd pick him up and he'd cry and squirm in my arms and i would just provide a safe space i would just hold him i'd let him squirm let him cry wouldn't let him hurt himself and he had to like work out that energy. Mm -hmm. And then eventually he knows I'm there. Obviously I'm touching him, but I'm not talking to him. I'm not like shaking him or trying to like, I'm just providing that space and it would work. So what I did with him in which, uh, you know, commend my wife for having the courage to do this because it's really hard for her. She went outside. I took the boy. I said, all right, we're going to lay down together. So I laid down and I put my arm around him, put my hand on top of him. Yeah. And of course he's like, ah, you know, after about 10 minutes though, you know, he, he, he starts to kind of, in between the cries, you can hear him start to settle down, yeah. settle down, falls asleep. Then I pick him up, put him in the bed and I purposely allow him to wake up because he also has to figure out how to fall asleep on his own. Right. Put my hand on his chest. Yeah. Again, crying, crying, about five, five, seven minutes, falls asleep. I've now done that four times in a row and it's getting like better and better. Yeah. So we're like turning the corner. And so I'm like, oh, thank you, honey, for letting me, oh, let good. me try that. Yeah. yeah. Because it's really hard. Like if he cries, boy, does that, you know. And again, I know that that is her, it's one of her, what really makes her special. She's like, when she talks to kids, she understands kids. She knows what they're feeling. She really did. A, I mean, I remember when we first started dating, she would talk to my daughter and I remember being like, oh my God, I didn't even think of that. Like you totally understand her. Yeah. But also because she feels so much, it makes it really hard. But Now oh, you guys were actually exploring even doing like a sleep specialist, right? Are you still going to do that or what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. So we're going to work with, uh, I don't want to talk about them yet because if they're good, I want to give them props. Right. Uh, but if they're bad, I don't want to give them any props. So. <laughs> <laughs> Throw some shade on them. Yeah, so um, we'll see how it works. But, they but you're came, definitely going to do it. I didn't know if you were going to do it. I know you guys talked about it. I didn't know if you guys- They came highly, highly uh, ranked. We got great referrals from other people, so we're going to try that. Um, so we'll see. I'll let you guys know what's going on. But I feel like we're turning a corner because yeah. he's starting to- And the thing is he associates- uh, her, Because the only way he calms down with her is if he's attached to her. Mm -hmm. And so then she, she takes him off. He's like, ah! Yeah. So I'm like, let me do this for a second. Let me see if this if this will work. And it seems to be working. Yeah. So man, good. So yeah. dads and moms out there, there's some light, you know, in, in there. This shit is hard, dude. It's real hard. <laughs> it's hard, but you. <laughs> oh, it's, I know. It, it's so revealing too. Like you said, your biggest strengths are also your biggest weaknesses. It's just one of those things. It gets even more intensified when you have a little one like that. That is a complete reflection of that yeah you know and you learn so much more than just that one thing like as they grow up you get start revealing these other personality traits oh, yeah. and things you see you're like oh my god is that me i didn't realize that was me i was talking to courtney about this a little bit with you know the way ethan acts and stuff and he's just he you know he hams it up every now and then and he'll dance or something you know when we're in the grocery store and all this and I'm like dude where, where does he get this from and she's like dude you do this all the time I guess, uh, you don't know that's like, you like, I, I don't realize like it's like it's like a it's like a tick I just start doing a show or, or whatever I'm just like hey, hey. I think that's the hardest part of being a parent is is probably owning that that the the kid is a reflection of you totally. in yeah. one way or another and all the way at, at their age even at the age that you're dealing it with starts right now right away and you don't want to think that right now you're just like oh no they're too young no totally. they're, they're already picking up on your energy and stuff like that and they are these little mirrors of you and so 
owning that as a parent. No parent wants to admit that good it's like, and bad. Yeah, because like my <laughs> oldest son. Yeah, we all want to admit the good stuff. Like, yeah, he got those smarts from me. Oh yeah, look at how fast. Uh -huh. he yeah, but you never want to admit yeah. the bad shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like my oldest son, right? He's 15, and he yeah. can be so fucking cynical. Like he'll break shit down, and he's like super like like oh well yeah that's because, and it's annoying as hell. But I. It's like, that's me, dude, right there. That's so me, because I can be very cynical yeah. as well. And then I'll try not to... Uh, my tendency is to like push back and argue and debate, but he also takes after me. In this case, he'll debate until... Yeah, he'll never... He'll the never, cows come home. Yeah, as I say, he'll never submit. No, he's, he, he's and he's good at it. He'll yeah. find angles and find ways yeah. to whatever, so I just... I'll step away, because Jessica's like, you know the harder you push... The harder he's gonna dig his heels in the ground, I'm like, uh, yeah. which is just yeah. like you. Yeah, exactly uh, like we do. It's so, it's so annoying. Anyway, did you guys have good Father's Days? I did. Yeah, yeah. I actually spent it in a blazing inferno. Uh, <laughs> what, yeah. dude? It was you were in Palm, yeah. Palm Desert was hot, right? It was 123 degrees. Oh, oh my god! I, I can't remember the last time I was in 120 plus. No. Thankfully, it was like dry heat, so it's not. It, it's not such as a dad bad. thing to say. It, I mean, <laughs> it's not the heat that gets you. It's yeah, the humidity. I mean, it is the humidity. Like for me, the humidity makes me super uncomfortable. But not to say 125 or 23 degrees is comfortable. It is not comfortable. I mean, you basically have to hide during the middle of the day from like one till four or five, even like it's just like too unbearable. Yeah, I remember living in Palm Desert because I, I lived there for a second, and I, it's the difference between the shade and the sun. Is like like it's unbearable. Yeah, in the sun, it's like yeah. a it's like you're in an oven. Yeah, well, I mean, even the pool itself, like you're, oh, we'll just hang out in the pool. You're not gonna hang out in the pool. Like it, it it's literally a hot tub at that point. It's a hot <laughs> tub, and you're getting beat on by the sun. And I'm white, and like it, there's just lots of factors there that that just go against me. Now, so. how are you sleeping? Because you're super sensitive to heat while you sleep. Yeah. So here's the thing. Like I, the only deal. I made with Courtney was if we're going to go, I get to control the thermostat. And <laughs> so it was like Arctic to cold in our room. And I slept like a baby. Oh, really? Oh, I, I slept so good. But uh, yeah, so we were, we were having a good time and I actually have a kind of a funny story. Well, oh, so one of the things though, was that like, I, I was, so I, I had like fans going the whole time. And I remember when I was at home, uh, like I don't have to have the fans running all the time because I have one of those Oolers. And, and so the pad on there is, is all set to like my perfect temperature and all that. And like, so I have all these fans blown. I have like, you know, the, the AC running like crazy and all that. And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm just wasting a ton of energy here. So I was like, I got to get one, you know, for the Palm Desert place too. My mother-in-law slept in our, in our bedroom this weekend. So she watched Max as we flew out of town. Mm. And when we get back, I totally forgot about the whole, my, the way our Uller is set oh, up. Oh no, is it too cold for Well, her? she was just like, what? What the hell is wrong with your bed? <laughs> because one side is like a furnace, like because yeah. Katrina keeps it at ninety five and then mine's fifty five. <laughs> so she's like, I'm either sweating. Your bed on, is haunted. Yeah, she's like, I'm yeah. sweating on one side of your mattress or I'm freezing on the other side of the mattress. Yeah, that's and I weird. Died laughing. I'm like, oh my god, I totally forgot to shut those off, so it wouldn't have to. She wouldn't have to deal with that. Yeah, it's it funny. Hilarious. It's almost like I, I'm on, uh, like sleeping on otter pops the way that I, I sleep. Yeah, yeah like, like, like I have that. it like super cold. And speaking of otter pops, so did you guys know? that Costco has alcohol versions of like Otter Pops. What? Dude, mind blow. Are they called Otter Pops? Or are they called something different? No, no, it's like the Kirkland brand or whatever, but uh, so they have vodka in it. And so, yeah, <laughs> I indulged a bit. You know, I went off the little dieting thing for a bit, but uh, near the pool, I was like, dude, it's so hot. I got to have something. And then to have a Popsicle with alcohol in it <laughs> i'm telling you guys <laughs> game a, changing this is a, slowly turning into a drinking podcast it is, <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, was, it was fun hey but however i did see a picture of you with your shirt off that you showed me in the mirror i only show you yeah you're close. yeah what's up Cl with that close I didn't, hold on a second. i didn't get a half what naked picture what do you mean i i showed you my abs like a long time ago yeah. that was in person i don't want jealous i don't have anything to blow up or you know put on my my bro i keep that close to me bro you're looking good dude i mean i thanks bro it's, okay, i'll tell I'm, I'm gonna talk to adam now first thing uh, he looks good dude. <laughs> like hey the aesthetics are coming through yeah like whatever he's doing is definitely working i would say do you remember when we first started the podcast? How he got real lean. He for did the, the whole, transformation. Yeah, thing? yeah. He's about he's about that lean almost. Oh wow! But more muscle. Oh yeah. yeah so yeah, it feels like I'm a little less skinny. You mm -hmm. know, like it, that was the whole reservation I had to getting lean in the first place. It was yeah. just like I've done that before, but I always feel out. like I get small, and I yeah. hate that. I hate feeling small. Now you you were at uh, your cousin's wedding, but did you yeah. celebrate Father's Day? Uh, were you able I, to do so, that? So yeah, Katrina. Um, 
and I love her for this. She she wanted she knew that I would want to be with Max on Father's Day. So and I didn't uh, I didn't arrange the flights. The night of the wedding, which was the day before we flew back, I said, "Hey, you know what? What time are you getting us back tomorrow?" She's like, "Oh, don't worry, we're 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 flying out at seven o'clock." I'm like, seven in the morning <laughs> after a wedding." I'm like, "Oh my god!" So yeah, I was a little tired, but uh, yeah, we were back early. I mean, I, I I got back before Max's first nap and got to do our traditional thing where we listen to music and he cuddles all up next to me and stuff. So. I love watching you with your son, by the way. Oh. I watched you a lot when we're at the baptism. You're you're so it's so good to see you with your kid. He's so like he's so close to you. Oh, we're we're extremely close to a point where I think that everybody gets a little bit jealous of the two of us because we're so tight. And I and I I want to believe that I'm going to be able to keep this forever right so I'm, I'm as a dad i'm on this mission of like because everybody tries to say oh enjoy it while it lasts and then he just takes off and then he doesn't care about you anymore and i'm like no i want i like i want him to like i want to be his best friend like so bad but then yeah. his father at the same time too so i'm not going to just be a buddy you know? you know it's hard it's hard when they get to the point where they like to do things on their own and be with their friends yeah. so my kids now so my you know 11 and 15 right so they like they'll hang out with me but then they want to go hang out with their friends. Yeah. Or I'll be like, hey, when they were real little, it was I would just tell them, hey, let's watch a movie together. Oh, my God, so excited. Let's make pop. Now I'll be like, hey, let's watch a movie together. Uh, actually, I'm going to be meeting up with my friends online. And my daughter's like, eh, I'm not really into that movie. And I'm like sad on the yeah. couch. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. man. Speaking of which, dude. Fatherhood. Have you guys seen that with Kevin Hart? Yeah, I watched no. it. No, bro. Oh my God, bro. I don't know if I want to recommend it because Katrina and I. How watch, much did you just? How much did well, you cry? Okay, so I watch it the, while we are in the hotel room in in Laguna, right? And while I'm away from Max. Oh, and I think I think <laughs> oh, you. bro, terrible idea. I'm like, and we looked at it. I saw it was trending like number one or one of the number one of the number one uh you know shows on Netflix right now. So I tell Katrina, oh, let's watch this. I, Kevin Hart, hilarious. Like, I, I love his stuff. So I get into watching it thinking that it's going to be this hilarious film around fatherhood and thought this would be fun to watch right now. But Jesus, it was like a rip your heart out it's, it's, type of oh, There's man. definitely humor in it. So it's definitely funny. It's got a comedy. It's funny-ish. But it's based on a true story. Did oh. you know that? I didn't know that. Which makes it even more hard to watch. Yeah, that's really hard to so, watch. So, I mean, I'm not going to ruin the story because it literally tells you in the trailer, but it's uh, this husband and wife, the wife, they have a baby, the wife dies. Yeah. He that's is, how the movie starts. He is raising his daughter, his infant daughter, by himself. And that's that's all I'm going to say about it. Oh, boy, was that hard. Yeah. Because And then you see the yeah. challenges he goes through. And then the stereotypes as a dad, it really made me think about how people view the capabilities of fathers versus moms. Yeah. There was one scene that I was like, oh, that's exactly what happens because it happened to me before. He's with his infant daughter hanging out mm -hmm. and at least four, peop four people walked up to him. Where's mom? Oh, how cute. Where's mom? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, where's mommy? Ooh. All, they, and has it ever happened to you? It's happened to me when uh -huh. I'm just with the kids. Oh, uh -huh. where's mommy? As if I'm like some idiot. That, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that baby's not alone with yeah. you for too long. Oh my <laughs> God, do you need help? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I got this. Yeah. Is mom close? Kick rocks. Do we need to call someone uh, to help yeah. you out? Yeah, so but uh boy that was that was really It good. also highlights though, I mean I mean how many how many probably dads or fathers go into parenting though a kind of relaxed because they know they got a wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? I'd be the first to admit that knowing how capable Katrina is, how much research she did on her her own, I'm a firm believer yeah. in how, how you do anything is how you do everything. And I've seen the way she's tackled every other part of her life. So, you know, I know that I'm like, eh, I don't have to, I don't have to worry too much. I've yeah. got a, but I got a good team set up, but I can't help to think that if that were to happen, had it happened to me, like, Oh my God, would my life be flipped upside down? Because I, I lean so heavily. Bro, I, I got hit hard with that sure. when I got uh, divorced because all of a sudden I didn't have my ex-wife there being the mom. Right. So it was just me, the kids. And at the time I was dating Jessica, but she wasn't like, I, I wasn't married to her yet. And I didn't expect her to do, you know, all the mom role. And I remember taking on these new roles that I didn't take on before. That was a learning curve, dude. Oh, yeah. You didn't even know how to do the laundry. I, I, well, point. no, that was when I was, that's when I was 20. Come on, <laughs> dude. Guy, I knew guy, how to do the laundry. Right this guy called me up like, yeah. hey, bro, what yeah. what cycle do you put this on? GTL, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Is that, the, <laughs> is that the thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, I want to give someone a shout out real quick. So, you know, you've been getting, uh, giving police, uh, like, stations. Yeah, and, yeah. We got, uh, there's a post office. I got, it's written up there. New Bedford, Massachusetts, downtown post office. They all listen to the show. The post office? Yeah, dude. Oh, no way. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So shout out to those. Uh, to those all right. Uh, Postmasters. It's because you yeah. talk about their calves. 
That's it, that's funny. That was probably <laughs> that was in the DM. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're right. You're totally right about right, the steps. Yeah, we all have impressive calves. Yeah, we've all got really nice. <laughs> yeah, tell Adam <laughs> yeah. from all this. <laughs> Fuck like, you guys. It's like ah oh, man. Yeah, from all this, uh, you know, from oh, all this walking. But oh, anyway, man. but yeah, but nice. I ran into a couple uh, listeners at the wedding. I thought that was really interesting, which I, so ironically- a lot So these of, are, this was family or friends? No. So, uh, well, friends of my family, right? So my cousin, Brett, who uh, the audience probably doesn't know this, works for the company. He works with my uncle, Casey, who's part of the marketing team on the back end. And, uh, you know, I just assume that if they know him, they know he works for Mind Pump. So I would assume that they would, or, you know, if they know who Mind Pump is, that they would have made that connection. But no, they did not. And so three different times at the wedding, which was really small, they had to, which by the way, imagine this, right? So COVID, sorry, I'm going left and right here. They have a wedding, 200, I think 50 people planned because of COVID, everything gets rescheduled, shut down. Sure. They have a hell of a time trying to get approval to a place to have a certain amount of people. And so this just keeps getting delayed and delayed and delayed. And finally, they're just like, we just want to get married, find a place that will accept us. So they found this place at Laguna Beach, which was amazing. But then uh, 80 Two people was like the limit. Yeah. So could you imagine, okay? Having to narrow down. Well, and not only that, but you've already invited originally 250. Oh, so you got to send out D invites? <laughs> imagine, Dang, could you no, sorry, just, hey, yeah. <laughs> just think about the stress that would cause a couple getting married. Of course. Like, and how do you make those cuts? Well, even just for me to, and Courtney, we went through that of not inviting kids and like having to tell like, you know, some of her family members that has a lot of kids and then, you know, some of my family members that was that was definitely challenging yeah so like, i can only imagine what, what was the, what did they say to them like oh so oh i, sh I should shout them out because i I'll, at least the two i we remember need a raffle yeah, yeah. <laughs> well adam made the cut yeah, so. Mich michelle and patrick were the, the two people that i i met they were uh awesome and so shout out to both of them um but yeah they they came up and you know the, everyone's always so polite when they want do you mind if i ask you a question I'm like yeah of course are you mind pump Adam? No. <laughs> I said, yes, I'm Adam. Yes, that's me. And she's like, oh my God, I've been listening to the show forever. And they go into this story telling me how long they've been listening to the show. And I think it's so funny and ironic because they're like really close to my cousin Brett. But I guess, you know, it's not like he's posting about mind pump on his social media. Mm -hmm. So if you never knew that, so this whole time, these people have been listening to the show forever, not even connecting that him and I are related. Now, now how does that, cause I've had experiences like that and there's been times where it didn't like, it's all, it's cool. And then there's been other times where I start to feel self-conscious cause now we're all hanging out and I feel like, am I, they're watching me. They'll so probably... when, when this first started happening, it would make me all weird. Yeah. Yeah, like when it first started happening, it would make me feel weird. I'm a little more comfortable with mm -hmm. it now, right? I'm more comfortable. And I think I'm more comfortable because of how much more we're established. It was weird when the when the business was really brand new. A lot of people didn't know what podcasting was. Then you have this random person who's, you know, say, say they're a fan or a listener. Mm -hmm. And then other people stand around like, what what the hell is a podcast? What do you do? So, because it's evolved so much, we've been doing it. That's happened now a few times. And I really like, I'm, I'm really happy for the the way that it all progressed for us so you know i feel like it, it kept always kept me level-headed and never made me feel like there was a moment of like oh nobody knew us and then all of a sudden we're like famous mm -hmm. it was like oh every once in a while and in the fitness circle we'd meet somebody and then it started getting outside of that and then it became when we fly some places and so it slowly happened and i think that our listeners are very very similar to us like yeah. i think we share so much on the show that they're like people that we would hang out with. Yeah. You well, know? The, the irony is funny because every time it's happened uh, in my experience is it's never when I'm at the gym. Like I've been to the gym a <laughs> few times. Like, hey, you know, like, hey, I'm, I'm here. You yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gives a shit. Right. And then I'm eating and stuff in my face and drinking alcohol or something. Like, hey, man, yeah. Yeah. I listen to your show. I'm like, oh, oh. Yeah. 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 You know, trying to wipe it your off. Third piece of cake. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is. Uh, You've been watching me this whole time? Yeah. This is low carb. Yeah. <laughs> low carb cake. Uh, Oh, yeah. so true. That's great. So it was a nice wedding? Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah. It was beautiful. They are right on the rooftop of this uh, this hotel, uh, the inn at Laguna Beach. And it was uh, it was beautiful, viewing the, the ocean and stuff like that. And it was uh, overcast all weekend. Like they call it what, June gloom over there, very similar to like mm -hmm. over in the Monterey area. Uh, but I mean, for photos, I'm sure it's going to be amazing because uh, like, right, Doug, and that, like that overcast, sometimes the best photos come out of that, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, even, and then it was all, I'm in a suit. So the fact that it was, you know, it wasn't as hot as it could have been. Oh, so. yeah. Did you get the fitted shirt? It's better. Is that what you were wearing? I, on one of the nights. Yeah. I, I got, finally got my Is stuff. it a game changer? Yeah, it is. 
It makes a big difference. Yeah, because when you wear dress shirts, uh, if you're fit, so you'll, you'll be more muscular, right? You'll have a smaller waist. They don't make shirts off the rack for people shaped like, especially you. You're such a wide shoulder. Yeah, I'm like, small a, waist I'm like a double XL shirt for my width and and shoulders and stuff but like a medium for your, yeah like your, a, yeah. so all my all so my, you look like it's you're wearing a dress you look like a clown yeah i can't stand that's why, why you're wearing the vest like yeah, to kind of cinch you in that's actually exactly why i wear uh, the vest yeah. a lot a lot of people ask me they're like oh man you're really nice what's with the vest and stuff and part of the reason why i do that because i look i feel like i look sloppy in a it looks like i'm somebody who doesn't know how to dress themselves because their their clothes are over yeah, all puffed out yeah it looks, like I, it looks like i have a dad who bought, let me borrow his shirt you know what i'm saying it's like <laughs> No, that's not what happened. It's I, or you like you lost a lot of weight. All yeah, of a sudden. yeah, but what it really is is just I've never. I mean, and I get the you know custom neck and everything else is that way. But I've never gone and had the the waistline. Big difference. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I've had to do that. I, I did that the first time I did that was for my cousin's wedding, um, and I was this best man, mm -hmm. and I said, "Hey, what the hell? Let me see if it like if what what the deal is." Never again will I wear shirt if I'm going to a nice event. If if it's not that big of a deal, I don't care. Yeah, huge difference because you don't get that huge ballooning crap look at the bottom of your <clears throat> your shirt. You know yeah. what I mean? Looks way uh, way better, dude. So I I did have a funny story that happened like Father's Day. This whole thing like uh, it was supposed to be relaxing. You know, like uh, the kids were were waking up, helping, trying to you know serve me bacon in bed and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, cool, awesome. And uh, so Courtney was was putting up new um, framed pictures, and so and they didn't really work out. And so um, before that, I had taken this huge thing of cardboard, and and basically I couldn't throw it in in our community because like they they get all pissed off if you put like a bunch of like big amounts of oh. trash in there that everybody puts in at the same time. So I'm like, well, whatever, you know, I guess I'll go find some random dumpster to, to, to throw this in. Mm. That's so, illegal by the way. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> allegedly I did this and, yeah. um, yeah. I, I, I have drove, a friend. I have a yeah, friend. I <laughs> <laughs> He's telling a story about someone. You know, this guy looked real similar to me. It was like yeah. driving this truck and, uh, through this alley and I found, Oh, well, uh, this guy found <laughs> this dumpster <laughs> and, and, took it and threw it in there and you know cool everything's great drove back and, and courtney's like oh my god this isn't gonna work like these look cheap because they weren't glass finish mm -hmm. and was like ah, i'm not happy with these or whatever like where'd you put the cardboard and i'm just like well i got rid of it you know he told me to get rid of it i got rid of it <laughs> and she's like oh my god i really hate to do this but i need it no oh, no i'm like you gotta be kidding me like it's still 120 degrees like i like everything is a pain in the ass in the middle of the day and i'm like dude really like all right you know i'll be uh whatever i'm gonna be a good husband i'm just gonna take this one for the team and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go back. And it's one of those dumpsters. It's like, it's you gotta climb in. You it? have to climb all the way in. Oh my god! There's no way. And and not only this, like, so there's there's a store right next to it that that was with furniture, and so it was like cleaner and all that, like the dumpster. I went on the side of the restaurant. Oh, right? that's so, the worst dumpster. So you have like all this shit in <laughs> like there. Chinese like, food and shit. Dude, <laughs> sauce and beer like spilled on it. Oh. And, and and I'm like looking, I'm like, dude, this is, no, this is good. And she's like, can you grab it? And so I, I had this broom and I'm trying to scoop it out. <laughs> and, the and, and then my arm got on the top of it and it's 120 degrees. So the whole thing heated up. Oh, it, it's, it's, it's a dude, I got like almost had a third degree brother. Ah! I'm, I'm not getting it in and I just I refuse and then I'm like you know what like I know this one place so there's this consignment store that always has uh, cardboard and, and they're Real like smart. and they're Bro, even like hey you are a problem solver so I'm like this is where we're going and so we go and and I'm I'm, I'm on my way and so we, we kind of like drive around in the back and we're like grab it and i feel so weird i'm dumpster diving like that's my day that's what i'm doing i'm dumpster diving today <laughs> happy father's day. hey happy father's day grab it throw it in the truck we're like oh my god this is so stupid we're making jokes about it and like this is this, really this is where we are now you know we're dumpster diving and i think taking garbage from dumpsters is illegal too anyway continue I, <laughs> again this is all hypothetical is that true I think so. I think if I think they can't, nobody's gonna care. They offer it usually when I'm there yeah. though to like pack. That you know, can't be true. I know your that furniture. I, to make I know sure dumping. I know dumping in in other trash cans is illegal, but not taking out. Yeah, yeah. I think it is because people it's still technically your property. Or and people no people will steal uh, do like identity theft stuff. Nobody cares. Oh, I, yeah, I didn't but, think. Okay, that yeah. brings, that's a good point. Yeah, if you I ever see someone completely going, hypothetical story, yeah. but it, so I I get back in the truck and we're making jokes and and I get back onto the, the the freeway there well the, the road and, and i start driving away we're like ha ha have a good time 
it flies out oh. of the back. I totally forgot like oh, that. <laughs> it just like took form and just flew out. And and I started laughing. I pull over and I start running to go get it. I'm in flip flops and I'm just like running to go get it. And then it moves and I'm like, oh shit. And then I wait. And then a fucking bus just bang, runs right over. It smashes the whole thing and like rips it into pieces. <laughs> and I'm like, no. Oh my I, God. like grab it. And, uh, so like part of it I could still use. And so I'm like dragging <laughs> get it back to the truck and we get back and oh my god like everything that went wrong could have gone wrong now were you able to return everything did it work so eventually i like cut it you know pieces and like made sense of it and it actually worked so oh my god yeah go, dude. so there is some some light and then add in it's 120 something degrees too on top of yes all that. dude and, wow. and, and so anyway so she she's like oh, i owe you one for yeah. this I'm running like, yes, a, you do running a flip-flops has to be the most unmanly flop 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 hey flip, what <laughs> you know what you never what so what was the gift remember we got we never got a chance to What'd you guys get from the wives? What was your, you had a box that you were waiting to open and we never talked about it on the oh, show. I, you never told us. Yeah, that's right. Is it uh, a she got podcast me this appropriate? Oh, okay. Yeah, she got me a, yeah. <laughs> oh, I have another story. Yeah, I was going to say, that, he actually. was like hesitating to say it. Like, oh, oh, another story yeah. about Oh, that. it was a big penis pump. Yeah. Yeah. She finally found one that fits. Yeah, yeah I know. It's like, could it could get bigger. I don't know. <laughs> it could. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> so I got a backpack, Sorry, a leather Doug. backpack. And so it was really cool. I was, I was stoked on that. But uh, yeah, no, when we when we first got to the airport uh, uh, and, and landed, um, I was there. I was there with with Ethan. We we're like waiting for our bags and all that stuff. And and Courtney went on to to go ahead to make sure and get the rental car. And I'm like, oh, good. And so we found the bags. And, and so I'm grabbing all of them. And and Ethan's kind of dragging uh, his bag and and, and Courtney's bag. And we're, we're waiting there for, for the shuttle to, to arrive. And he's like, Dad, Mom's bag is buzzing. Oh, what? no. Mom's bag's buzzing. And I was like, my whole face like turned white. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, was how it, do I respond to this, Was dude? it the toothbrush? Yeah, it was the toothbrush. Oh. It was a toothbrush. That's but, happened to me before. I was wow. Like, that's happened to me it, it's, it's, he's, like, he's like scrambling to like try and find. It. I'm like, no, don't find it. Let me, that daddy find it. Bro. Daddy, you'll you know, find that's it. That's happened to me. You know before. what's bad is that that makes your guys' heart stop, which means you guys take your sex toys with you so many different well, places. Well, it's not the that. That, like, that wouldn't even come to my I mind. Mean, like, I'm not, not having it. If like my bag was vibrating, I'd be like, that's strange. Yeah, I wonder why it's yeah, vibrating. But you yeah, guys travel yeah. with your sex toys so much that that's the first thing that comes to mind. I mean, like, me. But that I, must be my double sized <laughs> vibrator that's inside there. Well, you think worst case scenario first? It's just it's just an honest thing. Look, to, oh it's not God. that I travel. Look, and I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying <laughs> hey, she does. Hey, uh, don't like, try and backpedal this I'm right now. Saying, that's what I thought. It could have been like, that. I'm very pro sex toys. I don't give a shit. I wouldn't travel with them because it goes through the X-ray. So you imagine the guy or girl looking at the X-ray machine and it goes through. Yeah. What is that going to look like on the X-ray machine? Remember when we we right. flew back from? Did you guys L- remember when we off? flew back from L.A. with uh, oh, sex with sex Emily? Emily. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Remember that was the same time that I, they did the whole inspection on me and everything. Remember? Yes. Oh, that was that was perfect. Yeah, Perfect. time. Did they? Did they, they yeah. did, a did you have a thorough inspection? Yeah, I had one in the bag. <laughs> Now, luckily, mine was like that, like cute little wee vibe, and it was like a giant dildo that I was uh, flying back with. Because that would, <laughs> which, what is this, sir? You know, yeah. so it was like it looked like a gift for my wife. Yeah. So it was like okay, you either know? that or you're just getting yeah. used to using it. Yeah, is this yeah. one of those new rings? You yeah. know, yeah. Like biohacking rings. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's a biohacking ring. I read it from exactly it. Ben Greenfield puts everything in his book. Why is it so big? I figured, oh, yeah, you know, it would work. So what did you get? Well, uh, so Katrina actually, you know, it's funny was um, or like the list midweek or so we had that episode where we talked talked about how I told you guys how I send her stuff all the time and yeah. she doesn't give me shit. So I totally know she heard that because I know she pivoted. So oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. she totally pivoted. I think originally the plan was to uh, get me a massage down at the beach while we were down mm. in Laguna or whatever. But our schedule was so tight that wasn't going to work out very well anyways. And I literally heard her listening to that episode. So I, she actually, I've been trying to get Justin to get these chrome hearts. And so she's been trying to track those down for, me for some, they're sunglasses that are really hard to oh, come okay. by. Yeah. They're super cool. Yeah. And uh, so she she actually tracked them down, and That's I, nice. I haven't received them. I got the the here's they're on their way type of. Yeah. <laughs> she ordered them. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, right. that's how I know. <laughs> She's such well, a guy. <laughs> it, yeah, oh, totally. My, my well, hundred percent. Katrina is definitely like that. The, the in the well, I am too though. So it works yeah. out great that we're both terrible with that stuff, which is why normally for holidays. 
her and I just agree, like, let's plan something cool for each other yeah. and, and do it that way because the gift thing is sometimes that's not hilarious. so yeah. Yeah, No, not I so got good. Jessica got my car detailed, so someone showed up, and that's a big deal for me because you guys know how I am with washing my car. I could care less. I was going to say, because you're really into cars. Yeah, no, so she, no, but I like it when it's clean. I really enjoy it. So she got that all detailed. Then her and the kids all cooked dinner for me together. She also bought me that uh, that that thing that we're going to hang up in here. It's Mickey's Gym. Mighty Mix. So this is Mickey from Rocky. Oh, that's great. So she knows what a big you know, Rocky fan I am. So that, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, also, I want to tell you guys this. Did you guys know, I don't know if it's going to be in regular circulation, but I went into my butcher box and added on filet mignons. Did you guys know they have filets now? Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I know Dude. you're a huge filet uh, fan. Okay, so I haven't had them yet. I'm going to be on, on that immediately. I haven't this. had them yet. We're having them tonight, yeah. but they're the six ounce like center cut filet. Oh, you already got them coming, huh? I, no, I have them already. Oh, I okay. just haven't cooked them yet. Oh, so God. they're defrosting right now. So I'll let you guys know I'm what the deal is. wrap that in bacon call it a day. Did you ever go get this sous vide or, or have you guys not, do you not use that? It's so funny you brought, okay, so we were talking, literally, Jessica's friend came over and I was talking about the filets. I'm like, oh, they came because the butcher box came the same day. And she, her friend is, uh, subscribes to butcher box and she was saying that the filets are really good. And Jessica is a huge fan of fatty cuts of meat. Yeah. And so she's like, like but isn't, yeah, so she's like, isn't a filet lean? I said, yes. it is, but it's very tender. Yeah. The key is to make it not over, that's not right. to go past medium. You that's have why, to. That's why I brought that up. Yes, yes, and then I talked about the sous vide. Yeah. So explain that because they were that's both what, like that's, that's gross. What, so no, what makes the sous vide so great, especially for fillets, because fillet is one of those things that's an expensive cut. It is a leaner cut. You easily can screw it up, and it's also really thick, so it's your timing is off. Like most steaks, you have to get it room temperature first, the whole deal. Yeah, right? and what and the sous vide just guarantees you to cook it perfect. So now, once, when you pull it out, you sear it. Yeah. Okay. See, that was the thing that she was like, "Oh, that's gross." I'm like, "No, no, no. I think he sears it." Yeah, you cast you cast iron. Keep the juices in. Yeah, cast iron skillet, or you could do your barbecue really hot and do it, but you do a little sear on each side. So what I recommend, and Doug can chime in because he's probably even more an expert at this than I am, Mm -hmm. is cooking it a little under perfect for you. So whatever you, if you like medium or medium rare or wherever that that temperature is that you like, and that's the key to anything like this. You got to kind of do it a couple times to figure out, oh, that's when I set it mm-hmm. at 129 or 132, it's perfect. Or you can finish it. Yeah. yeah. And then and you know that you're going to probably sear it for a minute to two minutes, you know? So because you're going to do that, you're going to cook it a tiny bit more. So I would barely undercook it and then it cooks more. Doug? So you sear after. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I like my medium rare. So I'll probably sous vide it at 130. Yeah. And then, you know, one, medium rare is 135. So when you sear it, brings All it up right. to that. I'm thinking yeah. about getting one because you guys have almost sold me. Yeah. yeah I don't, my only, dr- the only bad thing is another kitchen appliance. Like, really? Am I going to get Yeah, but it's little. Yeah. I know. It's it, tiny. It is, huh? Yeah, it's just a little, it looks like a little rod like this. And it just sits in the in the the pot or whatever, and then you get they make. Remember when I first brought it up, people were like, they make these that, that are non plastic bags, the or silicone. Whatever. Yes, yeah, there you go, oh, silicone yeah. bags that you can you can cook them in. So, yeah, no, I I mean I I yeah. think so. I'm amazing. excited to cook them tonight, and then you said wrap them in bacon. So Justin, what do I yeah. do? Do I wrap them? Before I barbecue them, so wrap them and then barbecue them. I don't know. I oh. have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done it, but I eat it. <laughs> Thank you very uh, yeah. much. I just bring it up because it's uh, you know something I want to eat. Yeah. You, you, you know, wrapping and baking. I'll give you something that my my brother in law did the last time we barbecued, just like two weeks ago. Uh, he went and got those big green uh, jalapeno poppers or whatever, and he and he carved out the inside of it, cut the top off, stuffed it with cream cheese, oh, yeah. wrapped bacon around it. Rolled it in cinnamon and then drop it on the barbecue. Cinnamon, bomb, what? Really? bomb, bomb. bomb. Oh, that's so you get that, that sweet and savory oh, mix. Bomb, yes. Oh, that sounds pretty good. It was so good. Yeah, huh. I have yet. The next thing I'm going to try is Justin's coffee rub, coffee yeah. ground rub. I still have yet to try that, um, but I'm going to I'm going to give that a shot next. Yeah, to see what we'll that's. have you guys over. We'll, we'll make yeah, it. Yeah, see what that's. Yeah. All right. So Adam, I know you said you weren't sure if you want to bring this up because controversy or whatever, but I'm going to I'm going to make you bring it up anyway. What's going on with the airport over oh, there? Oh, that- yeah. So, I mean, well, part of why I wasn't going to be just because um, it's not like something I went and researched and read a lot. I was, this was, it started on hearsay, then I confirmed it to see if it was true. But when I was, I was getting a ride to the airport um, or from the airport, John Wayne, yeah. uh, we flew, that's where we flew into, right? Southern California. Mm hmm. And I've flown in there a bunch of times before. And when we were heading back, uh, my driver made a comment saying like, oh yeah, well, n- not much longer. They're changing the name. I said, huh? why, w- why would they change the name? And I guess that John Wayne back in 1971 did had an, an interview with Playboy magazine. 
and made some racist or sexist type comments. And so they're going to pull. What was the comment, though? You told me it didn't yeah, sound that bad. Yeah. So it's something I think he alluded to the Black Panthers being, uh, you know, lazy. Lazy. So that was the thing that he said. Yeah. Well, again, like I said, maybe Doug can. Oh, there we go. Doug's pulling it up right now. Oh, yeah. so he's. Uh, I believe in white supremacy as well. Well, no, that's the article. So that's yeah. again. You got to. That's all. You know what the problem with all of this is, by the way, not defending. Uh, if that's true and that's what he said, not well, yeah, defending that. Yeah, but we're it's it's an endless rabbit hole. It, yes, well, and it's selective because here's the truth. This is what I'm gonna say right now. This is the truth. If they're going to cancel people consistently, the Democrat Party, and I'm not a Republican. You guys know I'm, I'm very libertarian-ish. I go between both parties. The Democrat Party wouldn't exist. They started the slavery. They fought to keep slavery. They fought against the civil rights movement. They were against women voting. I don't know why it's not. they're not being targeted by the same. And I know why. It's well, because they're, they're, they're the, the ones wielding I was the say power. They're, they're the one doing the targeting. It's so ridiculous yeah, yeah, to yeah. me. It's And you can't do this. You can't judge past behaviors with yeah. cur by current standards because current standards change and this is a good thing it's current especially celebrities i yeah. mean i could you could find some some bullshit any celebrity said on like it doesn't matter what ethnicity Bro, they are. forget that just anybody said I mean, we move forward we progress go yeah. back 50 years i mean this just everybody went, said shit so i don't was, idolize any of them it's just interesting too i mean it, it just went viral right in what 2019 is what the article said doug uh, yes yeah so it's like i mean there's something that's been been around since 1980 something and then because of obviously the the climate over the last two years has been so crazy that, you know, somebody came up and found this and then is doing it. It's just, this is not how you fix the problem, by the way, this is pretending to like, you know, Oh, we, we changed the name problem solved. Yeah. No, yeah. it doesn't do anything. That's kind of whatever. Yeah, so Focus thought, your energy on, on important things. In my opinion, you know, speaking of my driver, this guy was so cool. Uh, um, Angelo, Angelo was his name. Italian guy from New York. Uh, that's what my brother's going to name his baby coming. By yeah. The way. Angelo. Yeah. 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 Real cool guy, man. And we just started sharing some really cool stories. Like on, on the way there, we ended up taking him on the way back too because he gave me his card. He says, uh, he was, we we're asking him, oh, how long have you been doing this? And he was, you know, Uber driver, right? And then he tells me that he he's also a private driver. And I said, what do you mean like private driver? He's like, oh man. He's like, yeah, I started it up a couple of years ago. I'm like, well, what made you go from Uber driving to private driving? And what was that transition like? He's like, well, actually it's kind of a crazy story. And then he tells me that one time he's picking up the airport and he gets this, this, this lady and she, uh, you know, he says super, she was super friendly. He was going to open the back door for her. She goes, no, I'm not going to sit in the back. I'm going to, it's just me. I'm going to sit up front with you. That's weird. And so he's like, okay. So he lets her in. She gets in the front seat. It's uh, Lucy Lou. Oh, cool. And they start talking and sharing like their, their childhood and stuff like that. And, and they, they connect right away. And she's like, you know what, Angela, uh, I want um, I want you to pick me up for now on. I fly down here. All I guess she flies back and forth between Laguna and New York all the time. And she goes, I, I think you should start up a, a private service. And he's like, well, what? I don't, he's kind of like, he's like, she's like, no, nah. I guess she has business cards made up for him, sends it over to him, instantly hooks him up because the she has a private jet that she has six ways with like six other, like a Netflix producer and some other so actors. So he's private for them. Yeah. So that's how it started. Now he's got a company in Las Vegas and he does this all the time on top of like his Uber side hustle too. That's great. Huh. Yeah. And, he, and she literally like set him up for private driving. And you know, what's so funny was that before this story came out, like I was telling Katrina, like, I was like, man, I just, some people are really, really take this Uber driving to the next level. Like I get in, first of all, on, 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 uh, my, on the back seat that he has the passenger seat moved all the way up so I can like, and he's in a nice Cadillac, right? So my legs can fully extend. There's two different, uh, iPhone or Android phone chargers that are ready to go there. Center console, you pop open. There's all different gums and breath mints. There's t tissue over here. There's water bottles on the side of the door. I mean, just like it makes you feel like you're getting into like a limo or a really nice executive car that's taking you around. I'm like, and I was commenting to K Katrina, like how professional and, and mm. smart that is, because then you get someone like me who appreciates it. And I asked for his car. That's how this whole conversation went. And then I paid him extra when he, so he, I messaged him because we're flying out early. I'm like, Hey man, I said, uh, would you be interested in coming to pick me up? And he goes, what time? I go 6 AM. And he's like, yeah. And he, and he, there's like a long pause before I get the response. He's like 70 is 75. Okay. I said, well, how about 80 cash? And he's like, he laughed out, uh, he's like, laugh out loud. Yeah, I'll be there in the morning. So, but I mean, I appreciate that. So that's, you know, you, you meet somebody like myself who does appreciate those things. Yeah. And then I think takes care of someone like that. You know that. what caused all that to happen? Competition. 
Yeah, right? I, I'm old enough to remember before Uber and Lyft and all those existed, and there was no competition. Yeah, just taxis. Taxis were shit. Smelt like dirt and freaking and they cigarette just smoke. Mean and yeah, just crotchety assholes. And they could give a fuck. Yeah, and they didn't care because they were the only show in town. Now yeah. you got competition, so you have opportunities for for people like that to do a really yeah. good job. Yeah, yeah. Hey, real quick, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all the free books and guides that we have on fitness, health, fat loss, and even for personal trainers. There's even stuff there for personal trainers. Mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from Zelen Castiat. How much protein can the body absorb in one meal? Is there a limit? And if it exists, what is it? 20 grams, 30 grams, 80 grams? Yeah, I like this question because it gets asked all the time yeah. and because it highlights uh, something that is, it is annoying in the fitness industry, and that's this. A lot of the information that we start to believe to be true really came from marketers and advertisers right. trying to market their products. So this whole concept of you can only absorb, and this is what you'll get sometimes, you can only absorb about 40 grams of protein at a sitting, or 50 grams of protein is about the most you can yeah, absorb How did they measure that? They measured it because that's about as much protein as you can pack in two scoops of protein powder. <laughs> exactly. That's where it came from. Nobody's taking cadavers and like you know taking samples of you know your cells and figuring all no. that out. You yeah. know what dictates how much protein you well, can Well, again, like anything else, so there's got to be some sort of truth in it. That's why yes. it gets that's why it carries some weight, right? Cuz obviously it does take the body some time to assimilate the the protein, right? And I'm sure it's but here's the thing, there's such a wide yeah, individual but everybody's different with yes. Yeah, right? And if you're uh, fasted versus if you were fed, if you're somebody who's 300 pound big person versus someone who's 110 mm -hmm. pound, all those things change. So I bet there is kind of a, a kind of a, a round number that's close Here's to Here's what dictates how right. much you can absorb, your digestion. That's all. Right. So if you eat past a certain point and you feel bloated or inflamed or constipated or diarrhea, then you probably went too far. That's what dictates it because Here's what happens with protein. It's a slow process of assimilation. So if you mm -hmm. can if you can eat 100 grams at a sitting and be okay with your digestion, you're going to utilize 100 grams of protein. So long as your body needs it, then you're going to assimilate it. It's not like this, uh-oh, the body's hit 50 grams. Yeah. Let's take this other 50 and, and do what with it? Yeah. Like, like it just comes out your body? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the thought, I think. No, it doesn't work that way. Your digestion determines this for you. So I know people, I've worked with clients where... They need to have small amounts of protein because for whatever reason, protein were was constipating for them. I had a few clients like that where they, if they would eat over 30 grams or so, they noticed that they would kind of get constipated. I know other people, other people where protein is extremely easy. I'm one of these people. I can eat a large serving of protein for mm -hmm. a meal. I can't do that with carbs. Carbs tend to bother me. But if I, I can eat 100 grams of protein at a, at a meal and feel totally fine. I so can so long as it's not mixed with something that you like for like if I have like let's say the five guys burgers, which ends up being like 56 or 60 grams of protein for two of these things. I'm fucked up from that, but it's because of the bread and the cheese and mm. maybe even the fact that it's not uh, grass fed beef like I talked about before. But if I ate just sat down and it had a, you know, one pound ribeye steak, I'm fine. Yeah. So it's literally like, I mean, if, if I, then if I had a half a pound steak and I had it with pasta or bread with it, it would, you know, it would upset my digestion. So I think that's the, the, the takeaway for people is to pay attention to what you're eating the protein with and d do you get bothered by X amount when you do? Yeah. Yeah. And it, I mean, if you think about back in the day when, when they were eating uh, mammoths, <laughs> you know, it's like they had to eat as much as they could before the, the meat spoiled, or maybe they figured out how to dry the meat or whatever. But the, the point is, is that you're going to adapt based on what your availability is too. And it's like, so to, to put an arbitrary number there, like, Oh, if you only eat, you're not going to, if you eat 60 grams of protein, you know, that's, that's that's too much. Yeah. Like you're only going to assimilate 40 grams of it. Like yeah, you're it's so it's such like otherwise. Bullshit. Otherwise, it would be. And Sal's brought this point up before. Otherwise, it would be a great strategy. Then you just eat uh, five meals with 100 grams of protein in it always, and then you can guarantee that you're not going to get fat. Yeah, you know? all those yeah. all those calories don't count because yeah. my body can't absorb them. That's a, yeah, it doesn't work. But you're, that's a great point, Justin. Like the way we evolved is we ate, and what prevented us from continuing to eat more was our digestion. So I'm sure we didn't eat Pat to the point we got sick. Right. We would eat and be like, oh, I don't want oh, anymore. Yeah. I don't feel good I'm anymore. I'm done. Yeah. And you're done. That's all. That's typically the number one thing that should dictate your diet and nutrition is how does it feel when you eat it? How's your digestion? Because if your digestion's off, 
you for, you can forget about you know building good muscle or burning good body fat. You're too inflamed. Your gut controls quite a bit of things. So let that determine. And so for some of you, it's going to be a lot. For others, it's going to be much less. Next question is from Omar Angland, Anglin Santa Maria. What's the best way to get rid of knee pain? Every time I do a squat, it pops, and I can't do a perfect squat from the pain. This is a, an area, I would say, where my answer has changed pretty dramatically over the last seven years or so. In the past, I would say foam roll your IT band, look at the hips. That's where some of it comes from. Now I'll say look at the feet, the ankles, and then the hips. Mm -hmm. I'd say those are the three those are the three places and start at the feet and ankles yeah. and then move your way up. If you just consider the knee as a dumb joint. Mm. It really has serves Flexes one, and one one function. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, yeah, it, you you really do have to kind of trace it back down to the feet, and the ankles, and the hips. But you know, really, I think that we just haven't put a lot of emphasis on the feet and the ankles and what that determines in, uh, as far as how that affects your entire kinetic chain. So it definitely plays a massive role. Well, I would actually first, because this person's saying they're in pain, it pops and prevents them from having a good squat, I would send you to the doctor. So that would be the first thing I did to potentially get an MRI because if, if they're in pain and they can't even yeah, squat it's down gone pretty far. Yeah. So it, there, there may be something that's, that's, you know, done to you or that you might have injured it somehow that's eliminating them. Then after I get, a, you know, the doctor telling me, Oh no, their X, Y, Z is fine. Uh, then, then we can go to work and I would go to work with Sal said, I would start with your feet and, and work the, the, the way up. And more often than not, it's going to be both, you know, foot ankle stuff related and hip, the combination of the of the two of those that's probably causing the stress uh, in the knees. Yeah, so, yeah, that's a good point because I mean you could have had an acute injury, like you could have had something where yeah it puts it put everything out of alignment uh, because of a torn ligament or, or whatever. You know the case was that now you you built this different type of uh, recruitment pattern that you have to to now try to retrain, but. Yeah, for the most part, a lot of the the knee pain that comes from a lot of like uh, you know overuse injury. Yeah, yeah. and again, just to, to clarify, remember the ankle is super mobile, so I can you know can it can flex laterally. It can of course forward and back. There's a lot of movement in the foot. The hip is super mobile. The knee flexes and extends. That's it. So if there's an issue in those two areas, yeah, and that's the midpoint. Yeah, the knee is bearing the brunt of that. Here's an here's a fun little trick, by the way, that you could do. I used to do this with clients. They would say, "Oh, my knee hurts." So then I would have them, I'd set up a physio ball squat. So if you don't know what that is, the, the ball is up against the wall. You put your low back up against it and then you move your feet away from it a little bit and then you roll down the ball and come up keeping your back straight. I would have them do that and then I would put a band around their knees and I'd say, push the band out or maintain tension while squatting. Do you still feel pain? Or I would put something in between their knees, squeeze this, come up and down, tell me if you feel pain. And if they didn't feel pain doing one or the other, it would tell me it's because there's stress on the knee because of an imbalance in the hips right. or the ankles. If you do that little trick and you find, wow, when I push my knees out against the band, all of a sudden my knees feel a lot better, you know it's coming from the hips or the ankles. It's not something maybe you know internally wrong with the knee. Next question is from Bad Inkling. What are your opinions on digestive enzyme supplements? Oh, you live, you guys live by these. Yeah, things. you know what's funny. <clears throat> so I have to these days. Why are, we, why are we not sponsored? Do any of our sponsors carry? None we're working. We're working with one potentially. So. Oh, are you? Yes. I was just saying. I don't know why we're not because both of you guys use this religiously. Yeah. So digestive enzymes, obviously, these are enzymes that help break down foods. If you, for the most part, you're contagious. Adam. For the most part, you probably <laughs> yeah. don't. Most people don't need them. But in certain cases, they can make a big difference, especially if you're somebody that uh, tends to have gut issues. Here's one. It's not a digestive enzyme, but it has tremendous value, especially for people who tend to have uh, acid reflux or GERD, you know, heartburn, that kind of stuff. Uh, HCL. Mm hmm HCL, uh, which I think, was that stand for? Hydrochloric? Hydrochlor uh, yeah. Look it up. Hydrochloric Doug. acid. Is, it, is that mm -hmm. what it is? Okay. So this is essentially the acid that's, that is produced in the stomach that helps break things down. Oftentimes when people have acid reflux, it's not because they have too little acid, but excuse me, too much acid. It's rather because they have too little acid. Yeah, the timing's all off. Yeah, so you take HCL right when you eat, especially a high-protein meal, and all of a sudden you find that it tends to solve issues. Also, having low acid levels can contribute to things like SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and other types of issues. So I like HCL for people. And then the digestive enzymes, 
You know when that helps is when if you notice that if you eat, let's say, more often than not, so where I notice it, somebody will eat a high fat meal and they'll feel nauseous or a little bloated, um, especially for people who've had their gallbladder removed. Take the fat, the you know, the enzymes that break down fat, so lipase and and I think that's the main one. Take that with your meals. See if you notice a big difference. I've had clients have a lot of success with those. So I think I've asked this before on the podcast, but I have you explain it again because when I hear it, the digestive enzymes, it reminds me very sim- very similar to like a prebiotic. How different are they? Like, what's the main difference between a prebiotic and a digestive enzyme? So prebiotics are things that feed uh, bacteria. bacteria. Okay, and then there's probiotics, which are actually bacteria. Enzymes are totally different. Enzymes literally are. Think of it this they, way: they cut back at the the bacteria. Yeah, or oh, things. Instead of feeding the bacteria, if it's, it's the acid. No, not yeah. the bacteria. HCL will do that. That's what I mean yeah. if it's the acid pills. But the enzymes themselves are what are used to break down proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. So, oh, okay. And your your body produces them themselves naturally. But some people produce a lo- like low amounts of certain ones. So supplementing with enzymes can help. So people who sometimes feel- Can you do that in combination then yes. with a prebody? It's not, it's not- No. Okay. No, they don't, conf- they don't com- uh, conflict with each other okay. at all. Yeah. Now, uh, here's where I see the benefit. If you're really pushing your protein intake and uh, you're noticing that maybe it's affecting your digestion a little bit and you're like, oh man, you know, I, I want to eat this high protein, but my digestion's a little bit off- Try taking digestive enzymes. Well, I've noticed it. So I've, I mean, I, out of the three of us, I pretty much almost never use it, but I have played with it a couple of times because you guys bring it up to the Tahoe house all the time. And I was about, I think it was one night I was going to have ice cream or I was going to have bread or something, something I know that normally mm-hmm. would bother me. And I took one of you guys to see, and I did notice a difference. Like it, it, it I felt like it mitigated the the the, the bloat yes. and the ups, how my stomach would be upset a little bit afterwards. I felt like it minimized that, right? In yes, comparison. Yes. Now, here's something else that's interesting about some of these uh, enzymes. So, bromelain is can be used as an enzyme to help break down proteins. If you take bromelain on its own on an empty stomach, however, it's anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Very anti-inflammatory. It's very, very remarkable. It does help a lot with swelling. I've yeah, noticed yes, that. dude. It's like one of the most effective anti-inflammatories I've ever used, but you have to take it on empty stomach. Next question is from Audrey Smith, 19. What are your thoughts on psychedelics? Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Psychedelics. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it seems that, that this hasn't been a, as big of a conversation in our space. Like, I don't know. Like, it for was a while, there was huge, right? It, it was like everybody was doing these retreats and <laughs> and, and having these, like, uh, totally uh, crazy epiphanies that they were coming back with. And now, all of a sudden, uh, it's not as much uh, I, in the news. I think that we... You know, okay, I'm going to speak for us, so you guys can correct me if you disagree. But I, I, I feel like for the most part, uh, used responsibly, um, we've been pretty pro with the stuff that's coming out around psychedelics. Now, I think that we took a stance early on to not talk about it because we were annoyed yeah. by the fitness space. I felt like you know we were what four years ago, maybe more, when we had. Uh, Stephen Kotler on the on the show. We had Jamie uh, Jamie Wheel on the on the show, which wrote Stealing Fire and Rise of Superman, mm-hmm. which they talk about the use of microdosing and psychedelics and inside there. Flow state. Yeah, so I, I think we we're we're all very fascinated with the research that's around that, and think used in the right environment can be an incredible tool. But like any other tool, can also be abused. Yeah. And what we saw in the fitness space around the same time that we were kind of reading and going through all this is just, it became this trendy hip thing to go get high and, you know, yeah. bang hella girls and do, and like get everybody uh, on psychedelics just and retreats. With them and and yeah. then trying to, to wrap in spiritualism on top of that, yes. which it, that's all we saw. But yeah, there's, there is a lot of value in them and there's, they're, they're powerful tools and, and it's cool to see what they're doing in terms of like uh, psilocybin and some of the research there where they're actually helping uh brain injuries and in ways to to address yeah. things like that and, and also to treat you, you know psych uh you know like psychiatric psychiatric disorders, disorders. yeah Thank you. yeah no it's uh, the the research on psychedelics continues to come out and it's remarkable but here's what's very clear they need to be really respected, like very, very respected. I think because they've been so illegal for so long, which was stupid. This was a dumb policy by the U.S. government. By the way, the U.S. government scheduled drugs, 
specifically to go after the counterculture. You're targeting the hippies. Yes. The 60s and 70s, they were counterculture protesting the war. It was a big deal. And they said, how can we throw these people in jail for expressing their, their liberty of protesting? I know. Let's make the drugs they use the most illegal. So if you look at the scheduling of drugs, the, the, the worst punishments federally were for like marijuana, mushrooms, LSD, right? Which, and by the way, those are all tend to be the least addictive and safest in terms of physical potential effects, right? You know, other drugs like cocaine and yeah. whatnot can be way more dangerous further down uh, the scheduling. But anyway, what that did, which, which was terrible, the side effect of that is because they were scheduled so illegal, there were no studies done on them. You had a lot of studies that were done in the 60s, early 60s, then they were scheduled as super illegal, done. And so the problem is in American psyche is we view we viewed psychedelics either as, oh my God, super scary, or oh, it's no big deal, they're super fun. This is what I did when I was a hippie or when I was hanging out. And it's this is so wrong. They're very, so far the research is very clear. They're ve they can be very effective to treat certain uh, psychiatric disorders, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder. So crazy. It, the stat, I believe, is like 80 or 90% of all- You're like, right. Yeah. It's crazy. After How, one visit, I think. Yes, but here's the thing. It's done with a therapist who's an expert in the right environment, and the person is being closely monitored. These aren't people doing it in the field with their friends or at a rave or at some music festival. Pink Floyd concert. Because yeah. something this powerful that can that can po potentially so help solve post-traumatic stress can also cause it. There's been ca many cases of people giving themselves post-traumatic stress from taking too much mushrooms or acid and it, it causing problems. So it needs to be respected. But the science is remarkable. And, and I'll, I've said this early in the podcast. I'll say it again. I think that we're going to see psychiatric medical breakthroughs in the next, you know, 20 to 30 years that are going to they're going to be complete breakthroughs. They're going to blow away anything that we've done in terms of antidepressants or any other treatments. It's going to be crazy. Now, help me help me understand the science a little bit about this cuz if I understand this correctly, the reason why it's it is so beneficial for these types of clients is and what happens, right? When you when you when you've had trauma in your life is you can't get away from that trauma. It keeps repeating in your brain, repeating in your brain. And one of the things that the, the the psilocybin is known for is to open up new pathways in the brain. So you make new connections in the brain. So is that- yeah, It's an altered state of consciousness. Is that what is happening? Is it's disrupting this this negative pattern of thinking about the war or thinking about these bad things, the traumatic things that have happened, and then they take the, the psilocybin and then it opens up new pathways for them to- Physiologically, that's what they seem to see is that the brain starts to rewire is what they'll say. But psychologically, so far, the best explanations that I've heard, in, in my opinion, are, let's say you were in uh, war, and in war you see terrible things. Something happened, or you did, this is where it really gets hard. You did something that's terrible that you can't reconcile because you consider yourself a good person, you consider yourself honest, then you're in war, some kid is running at you with a grenade, something terrible, you blow him, you blow him away, and now you can't reconcile that. And the challenge isn't that you relive it necessarily in your head, but rather you can't revisit it to process it. So you, you're so, I can't think of it, I, it can't reconcile it, you avoid it and it causes all these problems. Yeah. And what they're saying psychologically is people will be given either um, MDMA or psilocybin, mm -hmm. is that they're this super empathetic state of mind where they can go in, relive this terrible thought or this terrible thing that happened, revisit it and process it. They actually find the will to process it through mm. and it can be very challenging, but they're able to process it through because when, when you have unprocessed feelings, that's when shit really gets really hard. So that's the best explanation uh, that I've heard so far. Yeah, I, I mean, I yeah. had a, such an, uh, a unique experience with it with uh, with Katrina. So um, I convinced her at one point to do a, a microdose with me and uh you know and the intention was we were we were out at the beach and we were going to be in nature spending the whole entire day together and you know we, at this point we've been together nine nine or ten years somewhere around there uh together so and we have I, I like to think we have a very good strong relationship with communication like her and i talk about everything and if there's ever anything going on with one of us like we don't let it fester we mm -hmm. we, we talk about it whatever and 
there is there's been something in our relationship that has always been really hard for us to see eye to eye on. It's just it's one of those things that we've just kind of agreed, like oh, we agree to disagree type of deal. And it's something that's really it's really not that big of a deal. It's something as small as I have this drive for us to to reach a certain place uh, of success financially. And her greatest fear in the relationship was that that will never end for me or that my drive for that is more selfish than it is for us, right? That it's, you know, oh, you have this thing that goes back to your childhood and you just, you want things and you don't, you'll never, you'll, you'll never stop. Like you're it. never going to be satisfied. That's right. That's yeah. right. And so that's kind of like her, her thing. And I, I've tried to explain it a hundred different ways to get her to understand me and that, no, this is not it. And how can you say that after all these years we've been together? And every time I tell you I have a plan or this is what I'm trying to do, I follow through and then I, you know, I move on from it or whatever. And we did, we had this uh, incredible breakthrough where, I mean, she, go, she was all emotional and crying and got me all emotional and crying. And uh, she looked at me and I'll never forget the look in her face when she looked me in the eyes and said, like, I understand. Like she goes, I, I understand. And I get it now. Like I, I never, I could never see it before. And it wasn't like she was like, Oh, the shrooms are doing this or like that. It was, we were not even thinking about it. We took a microdose. It was hours earlier. Just a super intense connection. Yeah. We were sharing. just, yeah, yeah, we were just having an open. Uh, yeah. Soap yeah. yeah soap. Having a great conversation. And, and we were, were sharing all kinds of different things. And at that point, not even thinking about what we had done hours earlier. And then it kind of just led down this pathway It got to a place where, and again, we didn't do it with like, Oh, we're going to talk about our problem. Like that wasn't even a conversation anytime recent that we had had that, but it naturally surfaced that day. And then we went so deep into conversation around it that I felt like we solved something that has been in our, that we have never really saw eye to eye in, in almost 10 years in our relationship. And so that for me, it was, I was forever sold on the power of it. Mm -hmm. Now that being said, I can also, I, I've done it less than, I want to say less than five times, definitely less than 10 times. So somewhere between, you know, three and seven times at the most I've, I've done it. Right. And I think that uh, it's something like anything else that you could easily go down this addictive, even though it doesn't have addictive. You can problem. abuse it really. You easily. can escape. Yeah. Use it to escape. Well, and it was, I, it was an incredible experience. So you, I could see people chasing that experience all the time, but like, so Katrina's family are big, big into like shaman and stuff like that. And what they would say about something like that is, the real power in these 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 drugs is not the actual experience itself, but it's the work that you do from the, the integration. Experience. Was, That's right. Yeah. So, and what I see a lot of people doing in the fitness space is chasing the experience versus, oh my God, I had this huge breakthrough. Now let me go back and put it put it to work and yeah. and work on it, work on it in my life versus always kind of chasing the high. Yeah, that's you know what that reminds me of. Have you guys ever seen that sculpture? I think it was at Burning Man years ago. But it's a famous sculpture of two adults, it's a man and a woman, and their backs are against each other, and uh -huh. you can tell that they're angry and pissed, and they're like facing away. And but the then on the inside, inside are like reaching for each other? Yeah, on the inside is two children. Oh, that's And the is. two children that's are right. trying so hard to, yep. to touch each other. And re it reminds me of that. Like You have so yep. much built up that you, when you're trying to talk to your, your partner, that sometimes it takes just to get out of that. Just get out of that, that space. Sometimes it means you got to just go somewhere else or you know, maybe take a microdose of mushrooms, who knows, but it's like you get out of your own way. You yeah, know what I mean? Otherwise yeah. it's like, you can't get through. Well, yeah. And I think that we, we, we try to analyze all the time. Like just in, I don't know if it's the prefrontal cortex, you know, we're just always in that sort of state of mind of like, you know, rationalizing everything. Whereas this sort of just like flips the table upside down and it's like, Oh wow. You just kind of think a bit differently, see things from a different perspective. So I see value in it from that. But again, like it, it's, it's a very, very powerful tool. You gotta be careful. Yeah, awesome. Look, if you like our content, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com because we have lots of free stuff that we give away all the time. These are free guides, free information on everything from burning fat to building muscle against mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So if you want to find us personally, you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. This is the key to health and fitness success. This is one of the things I love most about fitness is if you stick to it long enough, it makes you feel empowered because to, in order to get fit and to stay fit, you have to take responsibility. You can't say, it's my genetics. It's the way I was brought up. It's my bone structure. My parents were overweight. My mm -hmm. parents are unathletic.